Hi, everybody, and welcome to Ivy English. I'm Karen, and I'm Chris Gorski. This is our few times a month all English program. Today is May thirteenth, and prepare to have a volley good time today. Oh boy, we're starting out hot today. We have a pun right in the title of volley, volley good time. But I saw this as very Karen. You said something different. Well, actually, the first time I read it. I knew it was a pun. It was probably a pun on very, a very good time. But volley and very, they're too dissimilar in my head. If I look at the spelling, I later thought of well, maybe this kind of has a British angle, and they're doing a pun, a jolly good time, a jolly good time. Now you probably know this word from Christmas carols, a holly jolly Christmas, or that's what jolly I old Saint Nicholas. Jolly, that's right. That's another good one. Yes. Yeah. So. Depending on the angle you're looking at, and I don't know if our writer today is British or North American in any way, or picked it out of the air, or <laughs> perhaps,、mm-hmm. uh, yeah, we do have a pretty good title. I also thought of the word "volley" as in the military language, something、oh, that、really? we'll talk about later. That's right. There is a lot of military-based language in sports. Okay, well, we'll find out about that、right. when we get to it in our article. And here we go. Our title again is "A Volley Good Time Pun on Very a Very Good Time," but it has to do with volleying. All right, and specifically volleyball. Volleyball is one of the most popular sports in the world, but its history only stretches back to the close of the 19th century. It was invented in Massachusetts in 1895 by William G. Morgan of the famous Young Men's Christian Association, or YMCA. Initially called Mintonet, it gained its current name when a spectator commented that the players were volleying the ball over the net. Indeed, that is the point of the game. Each team of six players has to hit a ball back and forth over a net with their hands. Before the ball touches the floor, the aim is to get the ball to touch the court of the opposite team's playing area. The team earns one point when they successfully do this. Each team is only allowed to touch the ball three times before it must be hit back to the other side. Volleyball quickly became popular in the U.S. with people of all ages and sexes enjoying its simple rules. And the fact that it could be played indoors, it quickly spread around the world with American troops introducing it into Europe during the First World War. It was an unofficial event at the 1924 Olympics in Paris, but it did not become an official Olympic event until the Tokyo Games 40 years later. By this time, the Federation Internationale de Volleyball, which standardized the rules for the sport, had been established. Playing volleyball is great exercise. Players jump up and down around 300 times every match. The same can be said about a closely connected sport, beach volleyball. This sun-drenched version of the game was first played in Hawaii in the 1910s. However, the modern two-player game. Originated in California in the 1920s, it became an Olympic sport in 1992. The game now has worldwide appeal, although it is more closely associated in the popular imagination with countries such as Brazil and Australia. Okay, very interesting. Volley, volley, interesting. Okay, back to our first paragraph. Volleyball is one of the most popular sports in the world. But its history only stretches back to the close of the 19th century. In fact, I think this is true about a lot of sports that we play now. They are actually quite recent in origin. That is exactly right. While we were reading the first paragraph, I was kind of ruminating and thinking about the origin of basketball, which mirrors this very closely. Right. And baseball is actually not that old either. Yeah, yeah. The some of the basic forms of baseball stretch back a long time. Hitting a ball with a stick is a、yes. pretty common thing、yes. in history, but the way we play these sports today not terribly old, which is interesting to think about. Like these billion-dollar industries were only just kind of invented because people were kind of not wanting to play in the snow, so they wanted to invent <laughs> things inside. That's one reason, especially when you're from Minnesota or New York. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's one of the most popular sports. Actually, I'm not into. Professional sports.、Mm-hmm. I think if you're gonna, you know, if you like sports, 
get out there and do it yourself. You know, if you like sports, you should be doing it, not watching it. That's the whole point is exercise in my mind. Okay, I'm not talking for everybody. And then I know <laughs> you're, you're really hesitating here. And I can see guys who are so into it because it's a competitor sport. It's, it's a good replacement for war. We, it very much is. We fight many fewer wars, I believe, because of professional sports. And that goes especially for men because you've got that thing in you. You've got more testosterone and all that. But for me, sports is most meaningful when you do it yourself. And the reason I could identify with this one right away is because I used to play volleyball in university. When I was at the university, we played every weekend, and I love volleyball. That's interesting. Now, personally, I'm kind of a tall, skinny guy. I personally like American football a lot. And to be an American footballer, you need to be kind of a burly type. Burly meaning tall, wide, strong, muscular. That's not really my body type. I'm kind of a like a stick. I'm a skinny guy. So <laughs> football didn't really fit into what I was able to do despite my care for it. So I understand your point and I agree that playing football is probably best. But honestly, at my age and in my body size, I do more watching than playing. <laughs> I personally never ever got into an American into American football. It is just too violent and too complicated. I still don't know all the rules. I mean, I sort of follow it and I kind of know what's going on, but I don't understand it well enough to like it and vice versa. I don't like it well enough to study it more. What I like is soccer. So when I was an exchange student in Germany and it was the World Cup that year and I really got into soccer. Everybody watched all the games at home. That's, uh, <laughs> I mean, it's a popular sport around the world. I personally, just not growing up with it, I never cared about soccer personally. So that's but why I, Germany changed me. Yeah, yeah I think that exposure to it. And, and probably, I wonder, because you were in Germany, you were exploring the culture at the time, it was a bonding experience which made, perhaps built your fondness for it more quickly. That's part of it. But for one thing is it's much easier to understand. Kick the ball. I, I suppose so. American football understand. does have a number Weird of rules. Rules. A down? What's a down? You know? yeah, just a try. <laughs> but like in many things, there's these clunky words that didn't need to be there. You Punt. could definitely. I mean, you've got, so, you got a whole vocabulary for all these things that are special about American football. But in soccer, it's all right in front of your eyes. Okay. So next sentence. Um, it was invented in Massachusetts in 1895 by William G. Morgan of the famous Young Men's Christian Association, or YMCA. Are you able at all to say that word without hearing the song? No. I, I, you read it, and it was just like, ba da ba da 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 da, -da. <laughs> So just go to YouTube and type in YMCA. Oh, what ba -ba 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 -ba. a great song. <laughs> <laughs> it was always kind of a silly group song, but it's, it's an earworm. Oh, I love disco. It's I an, love disco. It's an earworm. So once it's in your head, it's not easy to get it out. I recently saw a comic that's got a surgeon standing next to a patient, and he's got a jar full of letters. Uh -huh. And he says, good news, we su successfully removed that tune from your head. <laughs> <laughs> it's really hard to get it out. And that's one of those earworms. That's, that's from German. Uh, from German. <laughs> from German. Ohrwurm. Uh, it just means a song or a melody you get in your head and you can't get rid of it. And that's definitely YMCA. But the other thing that came to mind was my mother. I had an image of my mother because that's when I first learned what it meant. And she says, oh, it means Young Men's Christian Association. So you can see it. See that I said it without stuttering ah. because I learned it when I was really young. I remember going to the Y as it's often called, mm -hmm. the Y, not just YMCA, because I lived in kind of a poor area. And so it there weren't a lot of places for us to go, but you could go to the YMCA and kind of have like an indoor gym to play at. Exactly. That's where I took my kids swimming when I was visiting in Minnesota. When I travel to places and I'm not sure where, where to stay, I just go look up a YMCA. They're pretty cheap. They're good enough. I don't need a fancy hotel room anywhere. And I know I'm getting a certain standard at a pretty fair price. Of basic cleanliness. That's right. However, you still have to check because I tried that in Hong Kong and the Y there in Hong Kong was very, very expensive. So I found somewhere else. <laughs> That's funny. I did stay at the Y in Hong Kong when I first got to Asia because I did not know anything. I showed up just basically, you know, blank slate. It's a good place to start. Eventually, I found that if you use these apps online to compare hotel prices, that's probably the best oh, yeah. way to go. All right. So a lot of these sports 
came into being, at least in their modern form, in the late 19th century or early 20th century. So, like we were saying earlier, they are just not that old. And we've run into a name now, William G. Morgan. Pay attention to the way we pronounce it. G. We put a little pause where you see the spaces in the typing. So, William G. Morgan. Okay, and then the next sentence, initially called Mintonet, it gained its current name when a spectator commented that the players were volleying the ball over the net, and I think that was really a great idea. Mintonet looks very French, which it is. <laughs> it's Mintonet. A terrible name. <laughs> I know, and the reason they called it that is because it's very similar rule-wise to the game of badminton. Right. And by the way, it is not badminton. Many people call it badminton. Mitten is the kind of glove, glove you put on your hand that doesn't split up your fingers. It's just got one place for the thumb, and then the other places for all four fingers together. That's a mitten. Many people say badminton. In fact, there was somebody on Facebook who was saying, "Where can I find other badminton players? I've loved badminton since I was a kid." And I said, um, "You better learn <laughs> how to you go spell there? it." <laughs> It was because everybody laughed, and I didn't mean to shame this person, but I thought if you're saying it's your favorite sport, you've been playing it for so long, you really should know it's not badminton. I've never said badminton. I feel like it's just one of those alternate sayings. I've always said badminton. I remember I made my students angry once because I was explaining sports and said often the sports describe the name. You know, football, at least for European soccer, you're kicking it. And American football kicking is kind of there. Baseball, there's a base you stand on. Basketball, you throw the ball into a basket, and it's called badminton that. because the game is bad. <laughs> and the, the kids got very unhappy with me. I didn't mean to interrupt your story, but I was just saying soccer does not make any sense to me. It does has no meaning for me, but it's called football everywhere except the United yeah. States, including to, Canada. I think. To be fair, and let me explain this story very briefly. Soccer actually was from Europe. The Americans adopted that name, kept the sport around, kept calling it soccer, and then the rest of the world moved on to football.、Oh. And so, incidentally, the word soccer actually is from Europe. That、oh. was the original name.、Oh, That's、really? right. This is kind of a lost meaning, and so everyone makes fun of Americans. But it's kind of like, hey, Americans are actually preserving this old word that used to be there. I did not know that it's because such it's so、fact. universally、yeah. called football elsewhere, which is a good name. What does soccer have to do with football, though? I don't know. What does Mintonet have to do with anything? It's just these bad eighteenth century, nineteenth century names. We have to look up the origin of that one. I don't know what it is, but anyway, I think that was a great idea to volley something. That means to throw it back and forth, back and forth, not just to throw once and you're done with it.、So、theory, back and theory, sock on your feet, kick. <laughs> There we go. That's my theory. I don't believe it. <laughs> Let's move on. Okay, indeed, that is the point of the game. Each team of six players has to hit a ball back and forth over a net with their hands before the ball touches the floor, and that brought back all these images of when I was at the University of Minnesota, and that's one of the ways that I learned Chinese because the Chinese students at the time none were from mainland China at that time, they were mainly from Taiwan and Hong Kong, and they had a group that got together for potluck, for for meals, and also for weekly. Movies and volleyball,、uh -huh. and then I became a really big volleyball fan as a player. I really enjoyed playing it. I wasn't as great as they were, you know, just knocking、oh, yeah. it over. But I really learned to love the sport. And one reason I like it is you've got a net between you, protecting you, so it is not direct physical combat. Yeah, I suppose so. I I do think that it's good to have those knee pads on though, because that is a sport when you fall, it hurts. That's a hardwood That's floor. You can hit your head too, but at least you are not engaged with the other people directly, like you are with American football. It's so so violent. You've got two people all mixed up together, which can happen in soccer, but you're not supposed to touch them. Yeah, I think the collisions are less so than in hockey and, and in American football. Oh, that's yeah. Hockey, I've heard, is even more violent. Oh yeah, you lose teeth in that sport. Okay, back to volleyball, <laughs> which I really I really like this sport, and I think it's reasonably safer. Although stuff can happen. Okay, so let's look at the sentence. So first of all, we know how many players are on each team, and usually we had a big group of people, so you would take turns. We'd play one game, and then we'd change players, or we'd change them one at a time. So everybody got a turn. But six players, it's really clear. You know, three in front, three in back. The one in back on the right serves. You learn how to serve, and the same is true of the other side. 
So it's not just this mixture of a bunch of people, you know, that you can't keep track of, each with a different role. Everybody has mostly the same role in volleyball. Okay, and just what you have to do is you have to get it over to the other side and you hope it hits the floor because then you get the point. Okay, next sentence. Their aim is to get the ball to touch the court of the opposite team's playing area. Just like I said, once the ball hits the floor, okay, that's the point, and then someone has to serve again. The team earns one point when they successfully do this, and we've just covered that. Each team is only allowed to touch the ball three times before it must be hit back to the other side. Now, it can't touch the ground, but if one person uh, gets the ball, of course, you can't catch it with your hands, you can hit it up in the air, setting it up for someone else who can maybe set it up to a third person, but then they have to knock it over to the other side. So it can actually go through three people total and then be hit to the other side, and it still keeps going. You have to hit the ball with either your hands or arms, right? You can't yeah. bop it with your head. Or yeah, well, actually, people do, I've seen, because it's not it's not disallowed. It's right. not something you usually do, but it happens, and the game doesn't stop if you hit it with your head. What about knees? You can Probably kneel not. down onto the floor, but you can't you kick can't. it with It has your, to be you know. some kind of arm or head. Yeah, usually not head. There has to be head, places not good. It's right? usually, yeah, yeah. usually your hands, and then you learn how to fold your hands together so that they are not easily injured because otherwise if the ball is coming really fast, it can bend your oh, fingers yeah. backwards and you can get badly injured. Oh, yeah. I've I've had a finger sprain from a volleyball once, kind oh, of landing gosh. on my finger. A dodgeball. We were playing oh, dodgeball, dodgeball with it, and it popped me right in the finger, and that, oh, <laughs> it hurts. So you learn how to... Uh, Clasp your hands together in a special way. It's got. It's like you've got three layers of fingers, mm. two sets of four fingers plus your two thumbs. That's three layers, and then it hits the top of your thumbs, and you've got like fingers padding it underneath. That's the best or safest way to do it. Our next paragraph begins, Volleyball quickly became popular in the U.S. with people of all ages and sexes enjoying its simple rules and the fact that it could be played indoors. Now, does anything strike you as odd in this sentence? All ages, no problem. How about all sexes? Yeah, I actually wrote there that I drew a little arrow from sexes to all because Mm. all means three or more. Right. Sexes means male or female. Now, there are... You know, other, I think is gender, is that the kind of the current issue? But gender and sex is kind of a separate issue, if I understand it correctly. Actually, at the moment, I think it's quite confused and intertwined. Yeah. In the past, say, if this was like 20 years previous or earlier, we would not be able to say all sexes because people would start making silly jokes and say, what are you talking about? Because normally we would say both sexes, but because recently, there have been so many victories in the area of gay and transgender, et cetera, rights. So we now no longer just recognize that they are two opposite sexes, that there are a lot of people who are binary, not binary, that they've got something in between. They may feel maybe half and half or they are they have a male body. They identify. I mean, there's all kinds of combinations. So now it is common to say all sexes, but I still do a double take. Uh, yeah, I did too. Um, and again, I'm thinking, is this gender or sex? But in all honesty, being a white male, I kind of don't Stay ask that discussion. question because I definitely <laughs> am not often welcomed into that discussion. Adam. Even with honest questions, like people come in with their knives out. It's it's a very prickly discussion. Absolutely. You should be very careful because a lot of people have a lot of emotion. And that's on both sides of ish- – all sides of the issue. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And it's better to play it safe. And if it's not something that you want to spend time arguing over. You could observe. You can observe and just be very careful. Yeah. Say something that will not create problems. So all ages and sexes, will just let it go. But it, it just still strikes me as funny, maybe because of my age. Even younger people, I think they'll still do a, a double take. Let's continue. It quickly spread around the world with American troops introducing it into Europe during the First World War. This was new for me. I hadn't known that. Nothing spreads ideas like war. Let me tell you, new food, new technology, lots and lots of diseases. It's trade that spreads religion. I even wrote it into a song that I wrote when I was young and doing this kind of thing. It's like Americans never learn geography until we have a war with someone. But that is (laughs) Even then, they're pretty poor poor at it. But even so, like when I was young, we were still in Vietnam. And suddenly people were learning Vietnamese. People don't learn geography or foreign languages until 
Some America kind of conflict. involves itself in another unnecessary war. Yeah, I Political had statement. begun learning Chinese before America and China started ramping up, and people thought that was strange. And to think this was in early 2000s, so I suspect that it must have been even more unusual when you got here. Actually, we had a very good reason then because that was the year that Nixon visited China with oh, a ping pong uh, team. It was immediately after 78? that. 78? That was it was earlier than that. It? Okay. It was like 71. 71, yeah. 71 and that's what brought Chinese basically to Minnesota and it right. really sent down roots quickly. Many people Many Americans who speak Chinese well are from Minnesota because of this. So I was part of the very first wave. Interesting. Yeah. Again, so it was politics that did it. All right. Let's continue. It was an unofficial event at the 1924 Olympics in Paris, but it did not become an official Olympic event until the Tokyo Games 40 years later. And that's pretty clear. We could see by the 1960s, volleyball is an official Olympic event. Let's continue. By this time, the Federation Internationale de Volleyball, which standardized the rules for the sport, had been established. There you go. So it's getting more and more official, more and more entrenched. Entrenched means that it's become more and more part of everybody's world and will not be easily forgotten. It's spelled E-N-T-R-E-N-C-H-E-D, E-N-T-R-E-N-C-H-E-D, entrenched. That means it's really firmly established and not likely to change. Okay, our final paragraph. Playing volleyball is great exercise. Players jump up and down around 300 times every match. That sounds very tiring. <laughs> it does, and it sounds kind of exaggerated, but when you think back at it, on it, you know, when we are playing, you're always jumping down because oh, yeah. you have to go for the ball. The same can be said about a closely connected sport, beach volleyball. There is no way I can think of beach volleyball without thinking about Top Gun. Just oh, I haven't impossible. seen the movie. It is the most iconic 80s scene for beach volleyball ever. I think of bikinis. <laughs> okay. This sun-drenched version of the game was first played in Hawaii in the 1910s. That surprised me. I didn't expect it to be so early, but Hawaii's weather has always been very nice. And so it's nice to be outside, whereas YMCA in Massachusetts in winter is cold, so play it inside. Exactly. However, the modern two-player game originated in California – in the 1920s. So I guess in the 1910s in Hawaii, it was like a regular volleyball game with six people on each team. But it turned to just two people in the 1920s in California, which generally also has very nice weather. Let's continue. It became an Olympic sport in 1992. Okay, that's another statistic. The game now has worldwide appeal, although it is more closely associated in the popular imagination with countries such as Brazil and Australia. Now, we are a little short on time, and I promised you some military vocab, so I'm just going to share a quick one. This is my favorite one. So Frank Gifford was this Hall of Fame American football player, and he said pro football is like nuclear warfare. <laughs> there are no winners, only survivors. Ah. And this can tell you how seriously pro athletes take their sport, but it does feel a little bit over the top to say football is like nuclear war. <laughs> but it doesn't surprise me as someone who's not a fan of violent sports. Yeah, it is ridiculous. But sports are just filled with words taken from the military. Blitz, bombs, trenches, no man's land, bullets, lasers, very military driven. I've read a whole book about this, about how America systematically trains its citizens to fit into a hierarchy and to prepare for war. And sports is one of the ways that America systematically does it. If you go to America, you may be surprised at how much sports, team sports, are emphasized in American high schools. Okay, we have a couple questions now. Number one, which of the following facts about volleyball is true? The answer is... C. A volleyball game involves two teams. And number two... Please complete the following rules of volleyball. All right, we're just going to give you the answer directly. To score, a team must... The answer is... Get the ball to touch the court of the opposite team's playing area. That is the answer. And the next one is, each team can only, the answer is, touch the ball three times before they must hit the ball back to the other side. And question number three, fill in the blanks with the information from the passage about volleyball and beach volleyball. So on the top, 
The column is called facts, and on the left we divide it into volleyball and beach volleyball. So for volleyball, it was invented in 1895 by William G. Morgan. A team has six players. It officially became an Olympic sport in 1964. And for beach volleyball, the modern version arose in the 1920s in California. And in modern beach volleyball, a team has two players. And finally, it officially became an Olympic sport in 1992. That's it for today. Tune in next time. We'll see you then. Bye bye.